السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ اٹس سو گڈ ٹو سی آل آف یو ہیئر ٹوڈے آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو ویلکم آل آف یو ٹو آور تعلیم القرآن انگلش ویک اینڈ کلاس الحمد للہ وی ہیو اے ویری اسپیشل گیسٹ ان آر کلاس ٹوڈے آور ریسپیکٹڈ استاذہ ڈاکٹر فرحت ہاشمی ہو از دی مدر اینڈ ٹیچر آف آور ویری اون ٹیچر سسٹر تیمیا زبیر ٹو ٹیچر سورہ ملک ٹوڈے ان شاء اللہ اینڈ آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو ریکویسٹ آل آف یو پلیز ناٹ ٹو ٹیک اینی پکچر اور میک اینی ویڈیوز جزاک اللہ خیر السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورۃ الملک سورۃ الملک از اے مکی سورہ اینڈ دا پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سید ان سورۃ من القرآن 30 آیات دیر از اے سورۃ ان دا قران دیٹ ہیز 30 ورسز اینڈ دس سورۃ انٹرسیڈڈ فار اے پرسن انٹل ہی واز فرگیون اینڈ دس سورۃ از تبارك الذي بيده الملك سورة الملك The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم also said سورة تبارك هي المانعة من عذاب القبر سورة تبارك is one that will prevent a person from the punishment of the grave The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not sleep until he recited سورة سجدة and surat mulk Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam How are you Alhamdulillah may Allah bless you all Surat al-Mulk one of the beautiful surahs of Quran The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never slept before reciting Surat al-Mulk and Surat as-Sajda So we should also make a habit to recite this surah when we go to bed before we sleep because it reminds us of many things which you will learn inshallah but make a niya just now that inshallah from today i am going to read surah al-mulk before i go to bed and it will be a good idea to learn it by heart and that's not a difficult job you can do it slowly slowly aya by aya it has 30 ayas if you memorize one aya a day how long it will take to memorize just one month and today is the 2nd of october month is in the beginning and first of muharram here or no in saudi it's first of muharram not today it's then tomorrow in the beginning of a new year you should make a resolution that first thing i will learn in this year is surah Al-Mulk. Start from tomorrow and memorize Surat Al-Mulk every day and ayah. And inshallah when you repeat it daily you will not forget. Because whenever we memorize we have a fear in our heart that oh I am memorizing but I don't think I can retain it. I will forget it. So better not to do it. So inshallah don't worry. Because you have to recite it every day and anything you do it every day you will not forget inshallah okay because it has lot of virtues and the best thing is that it prevents from the punishment of grave who is scared of grave all of us you remember usman radhiyallahu an he used to listen about jahannam and other things other stuff he was not scared but whenever he passed by a grave or he heard something about grave he used to cry and cry and cry so much that his beard get wet so grave is something really horrible it's dark and maybe it's wet and maybe it's cold or hot hot because of adab so we all should prepare for that day we will land in our grave and this surah is the best surah to learn memorize understand and practice so we are saved from the punishment of grave inshallah okay let's start bismillahir rahmanir rahim tabarakalladhi biyadihi almulk blessed is he in whose hand is dominion wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir and he is over all things competent fully able tabaraka he is blessed 
Tabaraka from Baraka. And Baraka is blessing. Khair. Goodness. And Tabaraka, He is blessed. Meaning Allah is blessed. Meaning He is the source of endless good. Nothing He does, nothing He decrees, except that there is good in it. He is the one whose ihsan, whose favors are everywhere. He is the one whose khair is abundant. Tabaraka, He is blessed. Who is He? He is alladhi biyadihi al-mulk. He is the one in whose yad is the dominion. In whose hand is al-mulk. Mulk, ownership, possession, kingship. Meaning, he is the one who has ultimate kingship. He is the ultimate king. He is the one who has ultimate authority over everything. There is nothing except that it belongs to Allah. There is nothing except that Allah has full power and ability and control over it. Whether that thing is somewhere up above, or it is around us, or within us, or under us. Everything belongs to Him. And if it belongs to Him, and He has full control over it, that means that He does whatever He pleases. He can decree whatever He wants. And that his decree is implemented. It is carried out. And of course, it is based on his wisdom. وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And he is over all things competent. If we see the creation that is around us, everything is created by who? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what does that show to us? It shows his power. We see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the angels from light. He has created the jinn from fire. And he has created human beings from mud. Light, fire, and mud. Completely different. And look at the different creatures that he has made. Having so many different abilities and different characteristics. وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ In this ayah, first of all, what we see is that Tabaraka, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessed. That all khair, all goodness comes from Allah. Secondly, what we see in this ayah is بِيَدِهِ mulk That kingdom is for Allah alone. In Surah Yasin, ayah 83, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسُبْحَانَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Perfect is the one in whose hand is the dominion of everything. Power over everything. Ownership of everything. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ayah 88, Allah says, قُلْ مَنْ بِيَدِهِ مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Say, meaning ask the people, that in whose hand is the ownership of everything? Who owns everything? And what is the answer to this? It is Allah. How is Allah's mulk? It is perfect, absolute, and complete. Such that we cannot add anything to it, and we cannot remove anything from it. We cannot add to Allah's power, and we cannot diminish anything from His power. In a hadith we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that, O my servants, if the first of you and the last of you, the men of you and the jinn of you, all of you became like the most pious one among you that would not increase in my mulk anything at all. O my servants, if the first of you and the last of you, the men of you and the jinn of you, became the most sinful, most wicked, like the most wicked among you, that would not reduce my dominion in anything at all. بِيَدِهِ mulk وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And He is over all things competent, able, fully capable. Nothing is too difficult for Him. Nothing is too hard for Him. وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ In this ayah we see 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his hand. بِيَدِهِ mulk That the mulk is in his hand. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the right hand of Allah is full. إِنَّ يَمِينَ اللَّهِ مَلْأَ It is full. And its fullness is not affected by the continuous spending night and day. He owns everything. And from that, he's constantly giving, giving, giving. And giving is not reducing his kingdom. The Prophet ﷺ said, Do you see what he has spent since he created the heavens and the earth? Just think about how much water has fallen from the sky in the form of rain, snow, and hail from the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth. How many people have eaten? How much food have we eaten? How many things have we received? Who gave that to us? Allah did. He said, yet all that has not decreased what is in his right hand. بِيَدِهِ mulk. The Prophet ﷺ on the day of Arafah, the dua that he said most frequently was which one? لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير بيده الخير that all good is in his hand and he is over all things capable the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he would make dua for someone who was unwell when he would do ruqya even upon himself he would say امسح البأس رب الناس بيدك الشفاء in your hand is a shifa, the cure. Biyadihil mulk, in his hand, is the ultimate kingdom, control, power, authority. And he also has shifa, meaning only he can give cure. So this dua tells us, Biyadika shifa. But normally what we say is, shifa is in doctor's hand. That doctor is very good. He has shifa in his hand. Don't we say that? No, we shouldn't say that. We should say, Shifa is in Allah's hand. He is the one who can give Shifa. Doctor can use his knowledge, help people, facilitate people, but cannot give Shifa. Shifa is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's clearly mentioned in this hadith, Biyadika Shifa. Because every khair is in Allah's hand. Biyadikal khair. Inna ka ala kulli shayin kadir. So biyadikal shifa. Biyadikal risk. Kullu shay fi yadillah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam frequently, he would say, فَوَالَّذِي nafsi biyadihi By the one in whose hand is my soul. أَلَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتَ أَلَّذِي He is the one who خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ Who created death, walhayata and life. Allah is the one who has created death and life. Why? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ In order that He may test you. أَيُّكُمْ As to which of you, أَحْسَنُ amala is best in deed, in action. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ And He is the exalted in might, the forgiving. Allah has created death and life. Meaning, everything is in His hand. All power is in His hand. And the power to give life and the power to give death is also with Allah. He is Al-Muhyi, the one who gives hayat, and Al-Mumit, the one who also gives death. Because He has created death and life. Why did He make us? Why did He send us here? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ In order that He may test you. So this life is a test. A test of what? That أَيُّكُمْ Which of you people will do أَحْسَنُ amala? He will be أَحْسَن in his amal, in his action. Who is it that performs good action? Amal that is أَحْسَن Now what is it that what action is good? What action is أَحْسَن? is best. That action which is correct, 
and that action which is sincere. When it fulfills two criteria, the first one being that it must be sincere for the sake of Allah, and secondly, its manner should be correct. The way in which it is done should be the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes and is pleased with. The way that He is approved of. The way that He has taught. According to the sunnah. So, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ And He is Aziz, the one of might, and Ghafoor, the one who shows forgiveness. Meaning He has full authority over His servants. If they do not do Ahsan Amal, He can punish them in this world. But He gives them time. For He is Al Ghafoor, the one who forgives people despite their repeated failures. Even if the sins of people were to fill up the earth and fill up the skies, He can forgive them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has created us. And He has blessed us with numerous blessings. And He has made it clear to us that we will not remain in this world forever. We are alive and a time will come when we will die. And while we are alive, He has given us certain commands and certain prohibitions. And He has tested us with trials over here. He has placed in us, within us, weaknesses and strengths, desires and temptations. And He has endowed us with abilities also. So the test of life is that who is it that will surrender to the command of Allah and perform well? Who is Ahsanu Amala? The one who will perform well, then Allah will give him great reward also. For him is a good reward. But the one who inclines towards the desires of his nafs and ignores what Allah has commanded, then for him is evil recompense. So right now, what is going on? We are, we are in a test. What is that test? That what kind of lives do we live? What kind of choices do we make? What kind of actions do we perform? Do we live as obedient servants? Or do we live as disobedient rebels? Everyone is being tested in this regard, with no exception. So the test of life is Ahsan Amal, whose work is the best. That whatever we are doing, how do we do it? Do we do it for Allah, or do we do it to show off, for some other reason? Do we do it in the manner that Allah likes, or in the manner that we like, or in the manner that people like? What do we say? Do we say what Allah likes? Or do we say what we feel like? Or what people find pleasing? Our speech, our actions, our behavior, our striving, our choices, everything is being examined. So what does that mean? <coughs> that we need to constantly analyze ourselves. You know when you're writing an exam, and you're told that you have to, let's say it's a multiple choice exam, and it says choose the best answer. Do you choose just any because it may be right? No. You choose the best answer because A could be right, B could be right, but C is definitely right. So you don't go for the A or the B. What do you go for? The C, because it's definitely right. You don't just guess over there. You know you have only one chance. So you better make the right choice. So this life is also what? Only one chance that we have. And every moment we are making choices. As to what we say, where we look at, what we look at, how we look, what we say, how we say. All the time we're making choices. And this is what is being examined. This is what is being looked at. You made a choice and you are here. After you finish this session, you will go to some place. Think, where are you going? Is it right to go there? Is it important to go there? Some people will go back to their 
homes. Some people will go to the market. Some people will go to see some friend. Everyone has a different plan. And everyone has a different choice. So, we repeat this every day. Think, are we making the right choice? Do I need to go there? What will I do there? Whom will I meet there? Is it halal to meet that person? Is it approved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How will I spend my time there? How much time I will spend there? We make choices every moment. Every moment. And these choices are regarding our actions, our speech and our thinking also. When we think about someone, so we have a choice. Whether we think positively or we have negative feelings. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us intellect. He has given us free choice. Now it's upon us. How do we do? What we do? What kind of choices we make? And it's not only today or at this time. Each and every day, each and every hour, each and every minute of our life. And all that is being recorded by His angels. Whatever we do. Whether we do it right way or otherwise. Everything is being recorded. And on the day of judgment, we will be shown our book of deeds. At that time, some people will be very happy. And some will regret badly. Because they had made wrong choices. So whatever you do in your life, whatever, from morning till evening, always think, always analyze, always Decide in the best possible way what's going to help you in the akhirah. Because everything is in Allah's control. Tabaraka alladhi biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Kulli shayin. It includes this dunya and in the hereafter. He is the malik yawm al-deen. He is the judge on the day of judgment. And his judgment will be the most right judgment. So, what will happen that day? It depends what path you take, what choice you make. It's up to you. Ali radiallahu anhu said that irtahalat dunya mudbiratan that this world is leaving and the hereafter is coming. And for each of them are children. There are the children of the world and there are the children of the hereafter. Children as in seekers, those who desire it, those who want to be, either in the world or in the hereafter. He said, فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ Be the children of the hereafter. وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا Do not be the children of this world. Because, فَإِنَّ الْيَوْمَ عَمَلٌ وَلَا حِسَابٌ For indeed today, right now, there is amal. Meaning right now you can work and there is no accounting. You won't be asked about, right now you're not going to be asked about what you have done, how much you have done, why you have done something. There is no hisab. So do as much as you can. وَغَدًا And tomorrow, meaning in the hereafter, there is hisabun wala amal. There is only hisab and there is no amal. You can't work over there. Right now is the time to work. So, of the deeds, you see, every moment we are doing something, right? We're eating or we're sleeping, we're talking, we're going, we're studying, we're doing something. Even if we're not doing anything, we're doing something. We're sitting and we're staring into nothing, right? Something is still going on. We can tell ourselves, I'm doing nothing, but we're actually doing something and that something is wasting a part of our lives, right? Even that was a choice and that will be counted. So, out of the different things that we could do in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do ahsan amal. What does that mean then? What is ahsan? What is the best deed? It is those deeds 
which He has ordered us to do. Because what He has ordered us to do, He loves that. From hadith we learn that a servant draws close to Allah. How? By performing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory. So, let's examine our prayers. For example, salah. That is also an amal. It's a good deed. But we need to see, how much time do we give to our prayers? And when we pray, what is the quality of that prayer? Is it just in order to get the prayer out of the way? Or is it done with ihsan? Because what is being checked is not if we have done what we were supposed to do only. What is being checked is also how we have done it. It's also the quality of the deeds that is being examined. So of the different things we could do, one category could be of ibadah, right? Worship. In worship, we have salah. Another is, for example, reciting the Qur'an. What kind of recitation is it? Why are we reciting? What is its quality? And the quality, not just how it sounds and how beautiful it may be or how many people are listening to it. No. But with which intention? For what purpose? And then while reciting, are we taking it to our heart or not? Or are we just reciting with our mouths and not even thinking about what we're reading? Those who recite the book of Allah, they recite it as it should be recited. يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ Then we see, أَحْسَنْ عَمَلْ One category is of worship. Another category is our dealings, the way we deal with other people. How is that? How is our speech? How is our manner? How is our sabr? How is our forgiveness? How is our tolerance? How is our generosity? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا All of this is being examined. So for example, when we meet somebody, when we see them, how do we meet them? Where do we look? What do we say? Do we initiate the salam or we think it's not that necessary? Do we give response to that salam in a better way? They said, Assalamu alaikum. What do we say? Nothing or wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Because the test is ahsan. Is it better? Is it good or not? When we are listening to someone, we're sitting with somebody. They're talking to us. What are we doing? Are we active listeners? Or are we passive listeners? Just there, we're reading something on our phone and we're pretending to listen to the other person. If our parents call us, mother calls us, that come here, what is our response? Is it that in one ear and out the other? Or is there some amal, some ahsan amal over there that we immediately get up, leave what we're doing and go and answer our parents? If we have to break our salah, voluntary prayer, if we have to break that in order to respond to our parents, then what do you think about breaking our sleep? Or stopping our meal? Or giving a break to our tea in order to respond to our parents? It's a choice, right? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا When we're studying, then how are we studying? When we're doing our lesson, when we're learning the Qur'an, then how are we learning? You know, for example, if you are reading a book or you're watching a show or watching a movie and you don't understand what happened, what do you do? You rewind. And you ask the person sitting next to you, what does that mean? I didn't get it. I didn't understand that joke. Can you explain it to me? We make sure that we understand these things. What about the book that is in front of us? How much effort are we putting in to understand what Allah has revealed? أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا And you see, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ He is testing you. What does that mean? That He will put us in situations that will try us and test us. And in that, what will be examined is our reaction. Was it good? Was it okay? Or was it a total fail? Because our true reality, it does not become clear until we are put in some Difficulty or some test. Right? At a time of ease, everybody can talk about the virtues of patience. Isn't it? But at a time of difficulty, how many of us can exhibit patience? How many of us can observe patience? 
Then, out of the different things that we do within the 24 hours, أحسن عمل How much time is actually going in productive, useful work that will help us in the hereafter? And how much time is just being consumed, is being wasted? So for example, if we are even cooking at home, right? Or driving, or doing our chores, then firstly we must see how much of our time is going in that. How much of our energy and effort is going in that? Is it really worth it? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us for worldly work. He did not create us to pursue worldly benefits. The dunya and its benefits, they are all rizq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken upon Himself the duty to provide His servants. إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرزاق. He is the ultimate provider. What is it that we were created for? For worship, for work. Working for Allah. Doing that which Allah will be pleased with. So then how much time is going in ibadah? How much? How much effort is going in that? And even when we're doing our worldly actions, then can we not make them ahsan in some way? How can we make them ahsan? How can we make our worldly work ahsan? Okay? Through the dhikr of Allah? For example, if you are cleaning your house, so you have a choice. You can do it in ahsan way, or do it uh, just for the sake of doing and just finish it. Also, if you are cooking, so how it can be ahsan? If you are driving, how it can be ahsan? In a hadith, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ الْإِحْسَانَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made ihsan compulsory, obligatory upon everything. Whatever we do should be done in an ahsan way. Whether it is worship, whether it's relationships, whether it's our home chores, anything, anything we do. So, what should we do? To do things in ahsan way. Think about it. How can we do? We are living our life because we have been given a life. And we have to live because we are here. No. How can be the quality of our life ahsan? Most beautiful. So our akhira is ahsan. So think about it. How can we make everything how can we do everything on the level of Ihsan? So what do we have to do in order to improve the quality of everything that we do? Whether it is some worldly task or some ritual worship or a righteous action, whatever it may be, how can we do it in a way so that it will count in the hereafter? Not just that our deeds, we are spending so much time doing something and it's useless the next day and it's not going to benefit us in the hereafter at all. What can we do to ensure that our action will benefit us in the hereafter? Assalamu alaikum. Sometimes we do have the knowledge and the right intention, but we are rushing things. We want to fit so many things in our schedule. The actions we do, they are not ahsan. The people around us are not happy with us. But inside, the intention is good. We are doing it for Allah. But the way we do it, our expressions, we are rushing things. So, just again, we need tawakkul on Allah. Take our time, do the things the right way. Also, making others happy. Take the family members with you. Listen to them too. Just don't impose what you want to do. Maybe they can have good ideas. Again, to make work ahsan. So take your time. Don't rush things again. Haste is from shaitan. Also remember this. Yes, and plan ahead. Don't procrastinate. This again will stop us from hastening and rushing. And love. Spread love. Right? Alhamdulillah. Anything you want to do in an ahsan way, what will you do? How will you do? What are the steps to do something in a good way? Can you tell me? For example, if you want to do cooking in a best way, what will you do? Assalamu alaikum. Being mindful and starting each of your actions with Bismillah. 
for the sake of Allah. So everything we're beginning to do, have that intention for that, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. If you're cooking, start with Bismillah and say it's a worship. I'm cooking to feed my family. That's true. Because if you are doing it for the sake of Allah, you will be smiling all the time while cooking. Do we do that? No. How do we look like when we are cooking? How do we throw the dishes? Yes. How do we bang the doors and the drawers and we're so loud in the kitchen, ruthless? Yes, because we are not doing it for the sake of Allah. We are taking it as a burden upon ourselves. We don't expect any reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this cooking. We think we are being used. Hmm? And of the best deeds is to feed people. Yes. So, anything you do for the sake of Allah, anything you do in a good way, you will enjoy doing it. And it will not be a burden for you. And not remind of favors later on. And not wasting that deed. What else can we do? Somebody mentioned planning. We should plan ahead. If we plan our day, if we plan our week, if we plan our month, if we plan our year, if we plan our life, so what are we supposed to do? What are our responsibilities? What is important and what is not important? What is urgent? What is not urgent? What is urgent and important? What is important but not urgent? What is urgent but not important? So, if our planning is good, our work will be good inshallah. If we have divided our day in different things, for different things, for example, some part for our ibadah, some part for our work, some for people, and do things on its right time, inshallah, you will enjoy. And there is no need to rush. You will be calm, you will be happy, you will be smiling, and the work will be very easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also likes deeds which are consistent even if they may be small. So part of ahsan amal is also to do good consistently. Because things which you do repeatedly becomes easy also. Yes. They become a habit. You become skillful. Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So when we choose something, it should be consistent, right? But when we come to the classes, we have chosen ahsan amal. This is Ahsan Amal. But when we go back, our parents should not say anything to us because we have spent half the day in the class. This is our weekend. And they shouldn't know what we are seeing on the internet. We are visiting a friend or internet. Parents should not ask us what we are doing because we have done Ahsan Amal in the beginning of the day. Now this is our choice. We should continue doing Ahsan Amal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and the angels are writing down. And everything is not right. It is according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has chosen and He has told us what is right and what is wrong. It is not our heart. Our heart might misguide us. Because ahsan is not what we think is ahsan. Ahsan is what is in the sight of Allah ahsan. Ahsan is not what people like. Ahsan is not what our hearts like. Ahsan is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. Assalamu alaikum. Um, we also tend to do things better when we know people are watching. And if we remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see us all the time, we will try to do everything to the best of our ability. And that's another way to just do everything correctly and properly. So now you understand, if you remind this every day to yourself at night before sleep, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. So we will inshallah constantly improve our life. What do you think? Why is it important to recite Surah Al Mulk as your last thing at night before going to sleep? Why? Because whatever we think, read, recite. Do last thing at night that stays in our subconscious. It becomes part of our life. So 
احسن عمل از ناٹ دیٹ وی ریڈ ون ڈے سورت الملک وی ریڈ دا تفسیر آف سورت الملک اینڈ وی ڈیڈ سم تھنگ گڈ وانس اور ٹوائس اینڈ دین بیک ٹو اسکوئر ون اینڈ ڈوئنگ دا سیم تھنگس نو اٹس اے کانسٹنٹ پروسیس یو ہیو ٹو ڈو اٹ ایوری ڈے ناٹ اونلی ایوری ڈے ایوری مومنٹ سو اٹس اے لائف لانگ تھنگ وی شوڈ امپروو اوور سیلف ایوری ڈے ایوری ڈے وی شوڈ بی بیٹر پرسن ایوری ڈے بیٹر دین بفور بیٹر دین یسٹر ڈے اینڈ دس آئی آلسو ریمائنڈ ایس ایٹ دی اینڈ آف دی ڈے اٹس اے ویری گڈ ٹائم اٹس اے ویری گڈ اپرچونیٹی ٹو ریفلیکٹ آن آور سیلس دیٹ وٹ ڈڈ آئی ڈو ٹوڈے ڈڈ آئی ڈو اینی احسن عمل اور ڈڈ آئی جسٹ ویسٹ مائی ٹائم ڈڈ آئی ڈو اینی تھنگ وچ واز of good quality of something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like or did I just waste my time? Did I waste another day? Our time is money, it's precious, it's valuable. And we have been given this time in order to produce something, to make something, to achieve something. So just as if you have money, you won't just throw it. You won't use a hundred dollars at the dollar store just buying random things. Right? If you have a good amount of money, you will go to a different store and buy something that you need. Buy something that is of good quality. So likewise, what are we using our time for? At the end of the day, we need to ask ourselves. We need to analyze ourselves. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ And he is Al-Aziz, the one of Izzah. All Izzah, all power and might is his the one who has full authority over his servants. So if they do not do ahsan amal, he can punish them. And he is al-ghafoor, the one who forgives. Who? Those who fall short in their duty. Those who make mistakes. But those who repent to him. And those who turn to him. He will forgive them. You see, there are two صفات اف اللہ اور اسما اف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دس آیا وہ العزیز الغفور ہی از العزیز الغفور دیٹ اف یو آر ناٹ میکنگ گڈ چوائسز ہی ول ناٹ لیٹ یو گو ہی کین کیچ یو یو کین ناٹ رن اوے میں سنگ اراؤنڈ اینڈ تھنکنگ دیٹ اٹس اوکے آئی کین ڈو اینی تھنگ نو He is Al-Aziz. He is Ghalib. He has authority upon you. We cannot escape. We cannot hide. We cannot run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can catch us from anywhere. And he is also Al-Ghafoor. That if we make mistakes, because we are forgetful, because we are humans, we are prone to make mistakes. So, We should not be hopeless, but we should not be careless as well. Thinking that He is Wahua, Allah Kulli Shayin Qadir, and He is Al Aziz Al Ghafur. Now think, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's sifat has been given in these two ayahs. What is the first sifa? Who is He? So in the first ayah, we see of the qualities of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Which one? Tabaraka, that he is blessed. Right? Then, Alladhi biyadihi, his yad, his hand. And then, biyadihi al-mulk. Thirdly, that he has mulk. And then, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, qudra. And then in the second ayah, Alladhi khalaq al-mawta wal-hayata, khaliq. He is the creator. Liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. He is the one who puts us to test. He puts us in different tests. He examines his servants. He checks them. And then we have Wahuwa Al-Aziz, the one who has Izzah. And Izzah as in honor. And Izzah also as in, another meaning of Izzah is might. So there is no escape from him. No avoiding him. And Al-Ghafoor, the one who forgives. You see, many times what prevents us from Ahsan Amal is Fear. Fear that we're not good enough. I can't do this well anyway, so why should I even try? We aim for perfection, and if it's not going to be perfect, 
we're not going to try even. But these two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they give us hope and encouragement. Yes, and sometimes we don't do anything because we think that Allah is all forgiving. So we see this beautiful balance over here that Al-Aziz, He has power over you. He can punish you. Why are you wasting your life? You better be careful. Don't just go on fulfilling your desire. Pay attention to what He wants from you. And yes, you will make mistakes. And when you will make mistakes, turn to Him and He will forgive you. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ But of course, don't make mistakes intentionally. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ 